Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to a very special occasion, purely for your entertainment tonight. We are your hosts, Lionheart, Mike Nikos, and I'm here with the Executioner, Michael X, and welcome to Open Mike Night. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another exciting episode of Open Mic Night. We are your hosts, Lionheart Mike Nikos, here with... The member of the hour, the tower of power, too sweet to be sour, funky like a monkey, scads the limits and spaces the place. Hi, I'm the executioner, Michael X, and I've been watching a lot of Dusty Roads recently. And who can blame you? Dusty Roads is uh, amazing. He is the great one. The greatest one. The American dream. Facts. So... Mortal Kombat 11, Purple Rain has finally been given to us, and holy fuck is he cool! Yeah, he he has become my favorite character. Like he has become my favorite character in the game, by the way. Oh, obviously, yeah. He's looking so at sick. I mean, we've never had a chance to play him in X. I mean, we've seen him make a few appearances in the story of X, but we never got to play him since what would you say since nine? And he was, that's the whole thing, is that he's only been DLC, he's never been main story, and I'm like, is it because his powers are worse than Sub-Zero's? Because think about it, he controls weather. Yeah, he, he, he has water powers, and Sub-Zero has ice powers. Yes, but he has water, electricity, a roundhouse kick that makes opponents fucking disappear to the other side of the screen, and then reappear on the other side. And he is, and when he turns himself into water, he can actually be immune to any opponent attacks. Uh huh. And don't forget, it's like I've always said, my dream team for MK Ninjas is not Scorpion and Sub Zero; it's Tremor and Rain. Because how do you stop that team? I'd love to know. How do you fucking stop a god of weather? Because that's a hard fight, man. Especially Tremor. Tremor. Dude, Tremor was one of the best characters when he first came out. At least from he, what I remember. He controls the Earth, and that's enough said. The fucking I, uh, Agni and Rudra of Mortal Kombat. <laughs> oh yeah, true. <laughs> so, uh, on top of that, you have Melina coming out. Who Which is looks, very strange, because I remember Not in really. X... Yeah. She dies in X, but they have the power to do time travel. Yeah, so that's what that's matter. in my mind. Oh yeah, time travel kind of screws with a lot of things. But I'm okay with it because they're doing it in such a way where it doesn't kill the momentum of the game. Because mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, we can bring in all these MK characters. Which begs the question, can Tremor please come back? Because I want to see what they can do with him with, like, his different fighting styles that they can give him. Oh, yeah. Fucking incredible in MKX. He was one of my favorite characters to play as. Oh, yeah. And lastly, since we have Shiva, Mm -hmm. and we already have, you know, everybody else. Yep, Fujin. Is Swiker going to return? Uh, I really hope not. I mean, I would be okay with Stryker returning as the, hey, you haven't seen me since Mortal Kombat 9, and I was a lot of people's favorites. And here's what they need to do for the next thing. Give us team battle mode again. That was fucking sick in MK9. Oh, yeah, true. The ability to have two-man teams and have people swap out to do crazy shit. That was mm-hmm. sick. Oh, yeah, true. And when's Reptile? <laughs> That's another question I was asking, because... It's, it's, reptile... it's either I want Reptile, 
Chameleon, because I want to see them actually retry that and do something different. Or give me the Cyber Ninjas. You're not worried if Ermac might make a comeback? But Ermac dies in the, um... In the, in the, um... Crypt mode. So I'm not super worried about... Ermac can miss a game. Ermac is everybody's personal favorite. I'm okay with him missing a singular game. But I, I either want Reptile or the Cyber Ninjas because it feels weird to have a Mortal Kombat game without Reptile in it since he's been a main staple since MK1. True. And honestly, I haven't... It's... Okay. So if they're going to do Chameleon in an interesting and cool way... Since, oh, wait, no, they can't do fucking Reptile or Ermac, because he's, their styles in, um, Shang Tsung's arsenal, they can't do it. All right. I completely forgot about that, because it's banned. Because it's fucking godlike. Can we just talk about how Shang Tsung is an awesome DLC character? I love playing as him. Because he's interesting, he's a completely different, like, different style character. He's not keep away, he's constantly like, I need to keep going. And True. I will keep going, and I will keep fucking hitting. And I will not stop. Whether you ask me to or not. Mm-hmm. Every Sado, and this is my... Arsenal. Yeah, because who... Let me just take a quick Google search. Who does... Shang... Because I know he has Scorpion, he has Sub Zero, he has Noob. Um, I think he also has Rain too, or no, no uh, not Rain. Uh, Smoke. MK Eleven. Let's try moves. Because that's of course, the thing I'm interested about. Yeah. And of course, he has reptile too. So yeah, that would yeah, not he work. Has, he has reptile sliding drop kick. Mm -hmm. He um, is the ultimate ninja. Well, I mean, back in the day in MK2, he was literally everybody on the roster. He was Liu Kang, Kung Lao, Scorpion, Sub Zero, Reptile, uh, Johnny Cage, Raiden, Katana, Molina, Jackson, Baraka. He was a fucking god. He was the best character in the game. Oh, obviously. And in MK3, he was everybody again. Like, his whole gimmick is to be everybody on the roster and take all their moves. Which is fine and fun, but mm -hmm. man, does it kill a lot of shit that he's trying to do. I suppose, so let, yeah. So let me see. Because I know they gave him, like, a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, MK11. I'm not too hyped about his, um... There was, like, an attack where he had to use banners, or, like, little scrolls. To this day, I still do not know what they're used for. Dude, like, I know it's like, pro... it's like a... You're asking the wrong guy. There. Yeah. You're asking the wrong dude that question. <laughs> Huh, I can't find any of his um transformations in MK11. Maybe I just have maybe I'm looking up the wrong thing. Strange. Yeah, cuz oh. usually they keep at least IGN kept a list when I first checked it out of like everybody he can turn into. Mhm. Mm okay, so it's Sub-Zero. Yep. No, because you know it ruins that, because fucking Rain's in the game now. Yeah. And Rain was one of the people that he turns into, so we can put anybody in this. Ah, so I was right. So, fuck. Um, who do we put in? Also, I'm not excited for Rambo. I'm sorry, I have to say that really quick. Another gun-based character. There's five, five DLC characters that use... Firearms. Yeah. Like, I mean, okay. The extent to the rule, like, the one character that doesn't really use guns is Joker. 
Yeah, because like not he... not really. He doesn't really use guns. He uses a gun, and that's about it. But it's a Batman puppet, so it, I can fucking completely go. Okay. And the I majority of the time, he up. just uses a, a cane. And of course, Spawn has to use guns. It's it, it's his gimmick. Yeah, because it's Spawn. But fucking Terminator and RoboCop. I love. Both of these characters, that needs to be said. I love both of the movies that they're from. Oh, and yeah. I love them as characters. But as fighting game characters, it's a lot of walking <laughs> and shooting. Yeah. Which I get if, like, I don't know. I feel like they did way more work with MK, uh, MKX. Oh, true. Because you've had a lot of characters that didn't use guns for DLC. Like, there were only two characers in that DLC that only used guns. The rest of it was just, like, there was Alien, oh, there was Leatherface, there was Jason. Well, even Predator barely used the cannon. It was it was more of a fireball than it was a gun. Yeah, true. It wasn't really a gun. I mean, I, a lot of people will, you know, be like, well, what are you talking about? You aim it and you shoot it. Yes, but it was more like, you had to take your time with it. You couldn't just fucking do one thing with it and that was it. You had to take your time and focus your shots. And, and he had three different angles to shoot from, which was super interesting. Um, I will say, though, one of my favorite characters in MK... Yeah, my favorite character in MKX is probably Jason. Because he's He is so the fun. powerhouse. He's a monster. He's... Just Jason unkillable. Voorhees. <laughs> He's Jason Voorhees. Yeah. He has three of the greatest styles because none of his moves get cut off. He's still really good even without the machete. And mm -hmm. I would even say he's a lot more fun without the machete. Yeah. So, Melina, I can say, I don't know what her moves are going to be because it's obviously, you know... Psy throw, ball, teleport kick. I think uh, it was explained enough in the uh, the teaser. Well, I mean, bits I, of it. Like, yeah, I, 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 know general, I know they're going to keep her... I know they're yeah, going to keep, so. I, I keep her chomp. Just oh, because, because of... that's such a good fucking command grab in MKX. Yeah. And she's half Tarkata, yeah, so... so it's obvious. Yeah. It works. Uh, I know that... Okay, so Shang Tsung becomes Ermac. Mm-hmm. Rain. Uh, reptile. Yep. Sub-Zero. Mm-hmm. Scorpion. And Smoke. Six ninjas. Yeah, he becomes... He becomes the Power Rangers of ninjas. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, he is the Power Rangers. It's green, red, blue, yellow, purple, purple. We'll call that the replacement for pink. Yeah. Black. So yeah, he's, he's the he's the giant Power Rangers robot. He's the Megazord. <laughs> yeah. Megazord. He's Megason. He just yeah. shows up. Ah, just but tiny. Man, he was... So I here's my problem with Rambo. I think they kind of already said that he's going to become a nightmare. He is going to ruin the fucking roster of this game. He's going to completely kill this roster. True. I feel like he his only inclusion in the game was probably just for eighties nostalgia. Because you've already had Robocop, you have Terminator, why not bring in another eighties? character like Rambo. Okay. Okay, so who would you replace Rambo with? Cuz I have my choice. Is it Ash Williams? Nope. I wouldn't I honestly wouldn't have chosen Ash. Cuz I feel like it's another character who does things that we've already seen. True, but then again, he was like he he is the He was mentioned a couple times like he would be teased a bit in the game. But, but then again, you know, you kept getting pulled out of the rumors and such. Yeah, I think it's because they just couldn't get the licensing for it, so they wanted to do it, like, super bad. And usually Netherrealm gets what they're looking for a lot yeah. of the time. But honestly, um, 
to replace Rambo, um, God, I would have to go with Tremor again because he was so he fun in X. But you have you to made make it clear how good he was. Character. But you have to fucking you have to make it a third party character. Because we yeah. can't do Kenshi because he's fucking dead. Yeah, like he's just dead. Even though, yes, I know time travel, yada yada, mm. but. I highly doubt Ed Moon is going to use him again. He was one of the best fucking characters in the game. True. Like, he was the best character for a long time of how good he was. Obviously. And there is no way on God's green earth that Ed Boon would ever bring back fucking Bull Ride Show. That character can fucking that's what we, die in yeah, his own that's fart what, fumes. But that's what we said about fucking Bo Wright Cho back in the day. We are never going to see this character again. Then Mortal Kombat X came around. And boy, what a disappointment. No, he, but he played good. That's the whole thing. It's just he's the joke character. I suppose. But I wasn't really too fond of him. Like, I, I never cared much about him. Then there was, um, oh god, there was Fujin. You know what? I wouldn't mind bringing Fujin back. I would honestly replace him as Tremor. Well, Fujin's already in the game. Really? In uh, yeah. Mortal Kombat 11? Yeah, he's in MK11. You don't remember? Really? I don't think I've seen him. Fujin? He was with, uh, he came out with the same pack as, um... Uh, fucking. He's a part of the whole story with Shang Sun. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, I'm not not Fujin. Um, fucking. Who was the character with a bow and arrow in X? Oh, uh, Kung Jin. Kung Jin. That's who I'm thinking of. Not Fujin. So I'm sorry. I want Takeda and Kung Jin to come out together. I I yeah. want both of those characters to make the same debut again because they were super fucking fun. And MKX. They were super good. And they've already been talked about in, like, side things. And it would be awesome to just see both of them return because of how good they were. Mm -hmm. And plus, why wouldn't you want to bring back the first gay MK character? Yeah. He is. I thought he was great. I, I like that it doesn't, it's not in your face about it. You know, it's, it's finally a character who happens to be homosexual. That's it. He's just yeah. that. He's Kung you Jin. Yeah, He's it's not like fucking you cool. Yeah, it's not like you don't spend thirty hours talking about his homosexuality. Like that's the I main hate thing. That. I fucking hate that, and I get it from a certain perspective. Of if we didn't talk about it, then nobody would talk about it. But you don't have to make it an in-your-face thing because I I'm not gay. I know you're not gay, and I know <laughs> about or both of us could give a shit if somebody's gay at the end of the day. You can yeah. do whatever the fuck you want. I don't care. But if you're if you're getting up in my face about it constantly, yeah, at a certain point you're like, oh my god, just stop, please, Honestly. don't last of us to this. We get it. We fucking get it. All right, we get yep. it. Honestly, but I will. Since yeah, that Rambo uh, is coming out, what do you think it would be his moves other than the M60? They're just gonna give him guns, or they're gonna give him the uh, the bow. I thought he was gonna get the bow and arrow. I thought he was gonna be the Kung Jin replacement. Yeah, but I guess we'll see when his gameplay comes out. Because honestly, it's not looking too great now. But I'm actually stoked for Melina. I wouldn't mind a lot of fighting her against such a uh... good character. Yeah. Also, did you hear that people want to ship her in a scorpion? I think that's hilarious to me. Really? Her in scorpion? Because she has a scene in, uh, I think it's Mortal Kombat X in the Challenge what? Tower 300 thing. Yeah. Where she goes, I bought you this teddy bear. And scorpion goes, I hate teddy bears. <laughs> It's like, how dare you accept my gift of love? <laughs> oh, God. Imagine the get... friendship between her and him in uh, Eleven. 
Okay, hear me out. If she's gonna have any friendship, can we make it a Britney Spears dance for for the walls? No. And then, uh, and then she pulls the mask down and it shatters the screen. No. You, all right. You know how? Um. Oh God. Not Melina. Um. I'm already forgetting her name now. Um. Melina's opposite, like her twin sister. You know how her friendship is that she's doing patty cake with Melina. Is it going to just be the same one again? I feel like it's the same one, except her sister is going to come out and, you know, play patty cake. If not that... <laughs> if not that, then maybe she'll give Scorpion, like, a teddy bear. Oh my god, I hope it's that last one. I really do. Because I want to see the fan base go, I shipped them so hard, and I go, good for you. <laughs> what if the teddy bear in Scorpion's friendship is the gift from Melina? That would be fun. No, you know, here's how you do it to make it really funny, all right? You show her pull out the giant teddy bear, and then Scorpion's fucking spear travels across the screen to grab it. And hugs it. Yeah, that, mm. You don't see the hug, because you've already seen his thing. Yep. Oh, that'd be pretty sick. Also, Netherrealm, when are we going to get Shaolin Monks, like, two? Can we please? Like, please? Yeah, we, uh, we don't like to keep waiting, bruh. <laughs> Listen, bro, okay? I want this right now, bro. You have uh, no idea, bro. I Sport. will say... Oh, God, I don't think we've even seen Rain's friendship yet. Um... I don't know. What? I don't know why. I feel like his friendship is gonna be from that meme of the kids standing in the rain while, um... Fucking Gary Jules Mad World plays in the background. <laughs> what if it's uh, he does Purple Rain? Does he show does up he in the show purple, purple motorcycle? motorcycle? <laughs> like, what if he plays Prince's song Purple Rain? Oh, that would be oh, great. Would be I would, great. I would that's that. who he's in reference to <laughs> is fucking Prince. <laughs> that'd that's be why great, he honestly. Is, you know, Purple fucking Rain. <laughs> True. Did I just ruin Rain's whole thing for you, good sir? Honestly, no. I'm actually kind of hyped if they would bring Prince's reference into the game as a as a friendship. I want him to pull out the crazy looking Prince guitar and just shred it. <laughs> no, it's gonna be something goofy where he pulls out an umbrella and does singing in the rain. I feel I feel like that or the Prince's Purple or anything will be most likely his friendship because I've actually seen Singing in the Rain and honestly it kind of fits for Rain but then again he is wearing purple so I don't know one of the two no but he is a reference to Prince like exactly it's, he it's confirmed if you can't listen Netherrealm you need to fucking go a hundred percent into this. And just do it. True. Like, just do it. Do we honestly need to care what Rambo's friendship would be? It's gonna be, uh, throwing his friend from that helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, who- So, you said your replacement that you wanted for Rambo was... One more time, because I couldn't really hear, uh, that choice when you said it the first time. Um... My old man was asking me a question. I'm like, I don't want to answer this right now in the middle of the podcast. He goes, oh, okay, sorry, my bad. Uh, I was going to say Tremor, but now I'm thinking of um, uh, Kung Jin. I want the Highlander. Really? Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Because... Why else? I mean, he's the Highlander. He's the greatest fucking grappler in a video game. Yeah, so, so you choose the Highlander. I chose the fucking Highlander, man. Of course I want the Highlander. I want Raiden from the original Mortal Kombat movie. Because <laughs> that's who he is. Mm. He's, yeah, he's Raiden. 
The actor who plays Raiden in the first MK movie is the Highlander. Why the fuck wouldn't I want the Highlander? I don't know. It's it's a mystery. Pretty sick. But... He'd be really cool, dude. Mm-hmm. Imagine like he um, just imagine the gimmick where every single time he like he beheads somebody, all you hear is there can be only one. True. Plus, it would give Clancy Brown something to do, you know. I'm surprised we haven't chosen Goro. Because she was in the game. Yeah. I don't want Goro if she was in the game. I don't want Shiva if Goro's in the game because you already have that whole premise. Yeah. What about Ferator? I'm okay with that character being left behind in MKX. I didn't really enjoy Ferator at all. Okay. I know I'm gonna get a lot of I know I'm gonna get a lot of shit on that, but it's like I didn't really like Ferator. The one thing I enjoyed from Ferator nothing for me. (laughs) Go right ahead. The one thing the one thing I enjoyed about Ferator is every time I kick down um Tor, I would just see Farah running back and forth at full speed like she's the flash. Like she really wants to get on his back, but fuck you. I'm just gonna keep hitting Tor to the ground and get and keep him from getting up. No, you gotta keep throwing her like a projectile. Yeah. <laughs> I will say though, I do like that it's a Master Blasters reference. I think mm-hmm. that's my favorite thing, is that is a it is a fucking reference to uh Thunderdome. Yeah. The most clinic the most critically underrated Mad Max movie, in my opinion. Honestly, it is. It's super good. I love Thunderdome. Mm-hmm. I'm okay knowing it's a PG shit. I'm fine with that. Yeah. <laughs> Just let me live in my fantasy, goddammit. Mm-hmm. Now, oh, here's do you think... One. Oh, go no, ahead. No, no, you first, good sir. You had, you had your question. I don't want to cut uh, you off. That'd be rude. That's fine. Um... So, do you think this is going to be the last DLC characters for MK11, or Fuck are they no, going to produce dude. more? Hell no. We still have a lot of characters to get through. Figured as I much, mean, yeah. so many interesting choices that they could grab if they wanted to. Mm-hmm. I don't see why stop, because MKX had, let's see... Predator, Alien... Leatherface. Jason, Leatherface... Triborg... Tanya, Bo Raicho, and Tremor. So that game had about, what, eight DLC characters? Nope, yep. nine, because you have to include Goro. Uh-huh. So nine DLC characters. And this game so far has... Fujin, Shiva... Shao Kahn. Nightwolf, who's got my fit. No, Shao Kahn's not DLC. You're right, he's pre-order. He was a pre- No, no, he is DLC. Fuck. No, wait, because he's in main story. Goro wasn't, so he isn't DLC. Okay. So, yeah. Shao Kahn, Nunzo, because he's, like, a main character of DLC. He was just a pre-order bonus. Mm-hmm. For, like, those to get, like, get him, like, early instead of playing through story mode to unlock him. Obviously, um, yeah. Yeah. So, let's see. Uh, Nightwolf, fucking coolest character ever. I don't yep. care. At me. He's mm-hmm. the coolest thing to walk on two legs. Yep. Okay, so... Nightwolf, Shiva, Fujin... Robocop, Terminator, Joker, Spawn. Now Rain... Melina, Melina and Rambo. And Rambo. We're at ten characters. Yeah, they could keep going. Yeah, because there were a whole bunch in um, fucking Injustice 2. Do you think they're going to make a crossover? Because they already got Joker. I think they got their crossover character, like, all set. There's no reason to grab more at this point. You know what I mean? Okay. I just don't see the point of grabbing more and more DLC characters. That are DC oriented. If they're gonna grab another comic book character, I'm not a hundred percent sure, because they grabbed the big two that everybody has wanted to see in Mortal Kombat. Yeah, like I can't think of another one to pop out. Maybe, fuck. Let me think. What if they? 
Hmm. What if they bring back Kratos? But it's I the mean, Norse Kratos with the boy so it wouldn't with be the same. It wouldn't be the same DLC character twice, if you think about it. Ah, you're right. Mm. It, it isn't the same, because that's a completely different Kratos. Oh yeah, yeah, he's the same Kratos in story to yeah. who we, as we know him in God of War, but he's not, he, he does not play, he will not play like the same Kratos. He's gonna have way more bullshit at his disposal. Yeah, and he's got the boy with him too, so, yeah. Oh yeah, he's got, he's got long range, which makes Kong Jin, if they do it, kind of useless. True. Because th- that's already been covered. You have a bow style character. I think it'd be cool. I think it'd be really interesting if they do it right. Because I want to see, I want to see Mortal Kombat go one more good round to grab some fucking crazy characters that we've never seen them attempt to grab before. Okay. I'm just not sure who to grab to... Fuck, you know who I didn't think about who's a Warner Brothers property? What? Do you remember Shadow of Mordor? Yes. Do you remember the main character of Shadow of Mordor? Uh, yeah, the guy who becomes a wraith. Yes. Him. Really? (laughs) Think about it. You know how fun he would be? How different he would play? That That's interesting, honestly. He's got bow for distance. He mm-hmm. uses a sword as his primary weapon. Yeah. And he has the ability to teleport in some faster way, but it requires him throwing daggers. True. He, he would be super fucking cool. Because he would be completely different from everybody else on the roster. Because oh, his, his his the way that I would do it is if he throw does like a throwing dagger or something, it mm-hmm. does like three four percent damage, and then he's able to teleport in for full combo. Yeah, but he can only do it twice in a fight, like you know what I mean, like twice in succession. Yep. As a reset, that's all it's for is to reset. Yeah. True. And it has to lead into a bounce. It cannot lead into just dead combo. It won't work like that. Just so that way the player base isn't getting super fucking cheeky and doing like these full instant kill combos with a single character. Because I think that that's kind of boring. At least from my perspective, I think that's kind of a boring strategy to do. Because like really, you're going to just insta-kill. You're not going to actually have a one-on-one fight. Okay, yeah, sure, whatever, man. Sure. I don't know. Uh, what, what would you do, good sir? Mm. Honestly, this would be a little ch- I'm thinking they have to bring someone from the Warner Brothers universe for a character, and in my first opinion, or my first thought, I thought they would bring in uh, Mad Max, you know, from the 2015 game, but then I'm like... That's another character with guns. I, I, at this point, I'm tired of seeing characters with guns. I want to see someone new. I want to see something that has been in a game, but has never made an appearance ever. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, they fucking throw in. Uh, you don't want characters with guns? Here comes Striker. <laughs> and I can just see your face now go, Oh, it's Striker! Great. Oh. Riker. Oh. Oh, no. 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 Go. You know what? All right, I got one. Damn it, Midway. I got one. So, you know how Tekken brought in Negan from The Walking Dead as part of their, Please like, don't. DLC character? Please don't. Oh, no, it's no one from The Walking Dead. That I can assure you. <laughs> Thank fucking Christ, and please don't let it be somebody from Game of Thrones. Oh, no, not even from Game of Thrones either. Actually, you know what? Fuck, again, he is a gun-based character. So, fucking may as well be from Game of Thrones. Because originally I thought of 
Um, that crazy dude from Breaking Bad, uh, Tuco Salamanca. You no. know, that crazy, coked Stop. up, messed up guy. <laughs> no. then I thought, again, he's a gun based character, so I'm dropping him. So, fuck it. If you say you want to bring in the dude from Shadow of Mordor, let's bring Jon Snow from Game of Thrones. <laughs> I'm only saying bring in the uh, the main character from Shadow of Mordor because of the fact he has something that we haven't really seen, which is a pure sword user. Oh yeah, I know somebody's gonna instantly go. Uh, what about Kenshi? It's like I trust me, I get it, <laughs> but hear me out. All of his combos involve the sword. Yeah. Now what about I don't. Now, what about if you were to bring, uh, well, I don't know, Geralt of Rivia in the game? He's in Soul Calibur. <laughs> he could make a crossover? No, I would not want to do that. I don't want too many... Well, let's see. Who else can they grab from the 80s mythos at this point that hasn't been done besides just grabbing fucking Chuck Norris and throwing him in a Mortal Kombat game? They could do Wait, Bruce what? Lee. With one hand, I can crush a die. I here's how I here's the problem with that. Bruce is so beloved that killing him off in a fatality just feel it's gonna just feel gross. It's True like grabbing Jackie Chan. It's like grabbing Jackie Chan. You kill him, it's like uh. <sighs> and plus, you can't do Jackie Chan because you got fucking. Well, you can't do yeah. Bruce Lee because you have fucking Liu Kang. <laughs> yeah, Liu Kang. Liu Kang. Kung Lao. Hot Dick dang, Lee. it's Liu Kang. Hot dang, it's Louie Booey. Here he comes looking ooey gooey. <laughs> Teaming up with, holy cow, it's Kung Lao. My family's dead, it's Scorpion. <laughs> 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 oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck! No! <laughs> Even I'm telling myself no. That's fucked up. Oh, I have tears in my eyes. Shit! Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> I'm gonna get my ass beat for that one. <laughs> Uh, Imagine Scorpion fucking on the other side of the realm shoots his fucking dagger just bre just attaches to you and all you hear is get the fuck over here! Okay, I got an interesting one for you. Yes? Jackie Estacado from the darkness. Really? He uses minions and imps and shit like that to fight and uses the darkness. Yes, he will have guns. Interesting. But hear me out. It will be one of those things where his guns are primarily a part of like him doing combos and wouldn't be like a range game thing. Because he has tendrils. He, he would be the perfect counter to spawn because they've had comics where they fight each other. Yeah, honestly. It's Estacado. Yeah, it is, boy. He's gonna fuck. He is a character that punched Superman and made him bleed. Wow. I'm not making that shit up. He hit Superman so hard he made he made the Man of Steel bleed. Huh. That's fucking cool. I don't care who you are. That's fucking cool. That's great. So let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, you know what? Yeah. How do you feel that they're doing Ultimate? I don't mind, honestly. I is thought it was... Is it because we're finally going to get all the DLC characters on one disc? And it's going to be exclusive for PS5? Yeah, I'm, I'm down for that. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, why try to resell all these characters again where it's like, just, just give every... I believe in giving everybody every, everything anyway. Just come up with your Game of the Year edition and then done. True. 
it's kind of like the Batman uh, Arkham series does that all the time, where they just come out with a later version that gives you all the DLC and everything, except for Origins. Origins didn't do that. <laughs> for some particular reason. I don't know why. And Origins kind of... Bad story? Or mediocre-ish story? Incredible fucking gameplay. Oh, it... Holy yeah. shit, is that game super fun. Agreed. I don't know. I don't really know who they... I don't know who Mortal Kombat can grab that's a Warner Brothers, like, property that's worth grabbing. Because... Here, let me take a look. On the interwebs. On the web inters. On the... Just imagine... Imagine... <laughs> Imagine just as like a wild coward to piss off Matthew Nova, fucking stored little. <laughs> Why are you pushing Stuart Little that fucking hard, man? Because I want someone to fucking beat the shit out of him and perform numerous amounts of fatalities on him. I don't care if people will come at me. I fucking hate Stuart Little. <laughs> But his family is dead. I don't care, dude. Imagine you're an orphan <laughs> at an orphanage. You see a nice, loving family with love and care enter the orphanage, and they choose a fucking rat over you. <laughs> Fuck him. <laughs> Tom and Jerry from Mortal Kombat. <laughs> That's even better. Oh my god, really? Dude. Oh, all the cartoony fatal. Oh, that'd be pretty fucked. Yeah. Uh, let me think. Like, I'm trying to think of all the characters that are owned by Warner Brothers. There's just a shit ton of them. Like, there's a literal shit zillion characters. Fucking Bugs Bunny. Just imagine from bringing him into it. I want Marvin the Martian if I'm having any Looney Tunes character show up. <laughs> Okay, I yeah. Give, I don't give a fuck. Alright, fair, I guess. By the way, quick question for you. Greatest uh, greatest conversation of Mortal Kombat 11? Greatest conversation? In your conversation. personal opinion. In your personal opinion. Um, I think it's the conversation between Raiden and Liu Kang where they're about to fight and Raven's like, we have I've seen this before, and it just unveil unveils all the memories he has with Luke Kane, and it's just like it opens up to him now. Like we've been fighting each other for fucking years. Let's just not. Are you sure it's that one? It's not the conversation with uh, uh, Noob Cybot and himself. Where they drop fucking references. <laughs> Oh, you're talking about, like, when they fight. I thought, they're talk I thought you were talking about, like, in story. Oh, no, not in story. I'm talking about, like, the actual in, like, in-game fights. When before the fights, there's always that, like, back and forth between the two characters. What's oh, your all right, game? all right. I got one. Because uh, I agree with you on the front of in story. That's one of the coolest scenes because of the fact that we get to see them do the same move in different time periods and see Liu Kang always fucking lose. Oh, wait, all right. Um, The greatest... Conversation, or I would I say the greatest roast would be with uh, Noob Cybot and Scarlet, because Noob asks her, "So you're an orphan?" And she's like, "Yeah, I'm an orphan. So not so even the fleas will mourn your death." That's pretty good. Yeah, I personally have to say it's fucking Noob Cybot talking to himself and making Harry Potter references. Interesting. Who are you, he who shall not be named? What is this deathly hallow? Fuck off. Oh, Christ, come on. Fuck right off, I love it. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think, like, who they could grab that's a Warner Brothers property. Aw, oh, fuck. Oh, you got one. Blade Runner. Harrison Ford. The trailer is Harrison Ford shooting rain. 
And all he says is there will be no more tears on in this rain. Okay. It's so fucking goofy. I would love it's it. It's goofy, but all right. I can see that. Then again, he, he is shoot, a gun-based character. He, but shoots, he shoots rain and says, I turned you into a fleeting moment. Like tears. In the rain. <laughs> Just something goofy. I just want to see it happen at least. Yeah. Yeah, because I know, like, Gremlins is owned. Fuck, I know why Rain is called Rain. Now that I'm thinking about it, that I hate it. Is it through the Blade Runner reference, or is it from Purple Rain? Okay, so Warner Brothers owns the rights to the movie Purple Rain. Yes. So they absolutely could use the song Purple Rain. Oh, so it's, we'll, he's definitely using it as a friendship. He needs to, dude. Come on, you have it, would, it right there. Just it fucking would, do it. It would be criminal to not include it. Why not? It's one of the coolest fucking musical movies of all time. Why mm-hmm. the fuck not? God, I don't know who they could grab that's an 80s character, because there's not really that many. I mean, there's Lethal Weapon, Police Academy, Blade Runner, Full Metal Jacket. Mad the Max. Problem, the problem comes in is that Arlie Ermey is dead, and, but he would yeah. be fine. God Beetle rest Juice, his soul. Beetlejuice, Caddyshack. I don't know. I don't know who they could grab. Michael Jackson from Michael Jackson's movie. Wait a minute. Warner Brothers owns the rights to Moonwalker and Purple Rain. Yeah. That's some fucking crazy bullshit, dude. Facts. Because those are like two of the like most iconic musical movies of all time. Like, no fucking joke. Oh, of course. The most expensive music videos ever done. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, we'll see what happens. I really yeah. hope that. I really hope that Rambo is going to be fun. I know yeah. Rain's going to be fucking fun because he's he's such a good character in general. True. He, he's hard to fuck up. He really is. Yeah. Especially that fatality where he has the eyeballs in a in a orb of water. I thought was great. That was actually that. That is original, and that is really cool. I just don't know what they could give her for a second fatality. Is it just going to be rain? Like he summons a rain, but it turns into hail, and it just destroys the body of his opponent. That'd be pretty sick. That would honestly. What if he pulls the water from the tear ducts of somebody's eye? And just drains the person. He pulls the water from the tear ducts of their eyes and then stabs them in the eyes with their own uh, tears. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'd like to see that happen at least once. Like, I've become blind by my own tears. <laughs> or maybe he, he takes out all the water out of a human body and just completely just leaves them dry. I I don't think that's physically possible. I mean, it's Mortal Kombat. They can do whatever the fuck they want. I'm just trying to figure out how that works. Yeah. Like, he, he dehydrates you to what? Like a skeleton? True. But then again, how is that any different to Shang Tsung's brutality of just yeah, sucking your soul out because he's just leaving you as a skeleton? I was killed by bones? <laughs> That's lamer than the shallow water death. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I would love for somebody to go, no, we are not making references to that. It's like, yes, no. we are. <laughs> oh. You know what? Yes. Post, a, uh, post a comment below. What character in Mortal Kombat do you really want to see? And I mean you really want to see. I'm curious. I want to see what people come up with. What's the limitations? Or can uh, there be no limitations? It, can, it cannot be a repeat character. Mm-hmm. And it cannot be a character 
that doesn't make sense to put in Mortal Kombat. Of course. Like, don't grab the fucking Care Bears or any of that shit. Grab, like, a character that would be a lot of fun. Like, a character that you're genuinely, like, I wonder how they can make the gimmick work and make the mechanics work. Yeah. Uh, like, how how do they make this character just do what he has to do or do what she has to do? Mm-hmm. Holy shit, I've only... I, I just realized there's only, what, in Mortal Kombat 11 has the most female DLC characters I think we've ever seen. Oh, true, yeah. I didn't even count Sindel, fuck. So hold on, Sindel, Melina, Shiva, then there's, for male characters, Rain, Fujin, Nightwolf, Terminator, Robocop, Spawn, and... Rambo. And Joker. Shang Sun. Is there... Am I missing anybody? Uh, Joker. Joker. Is that it? Is that how many DLC characters there were in MK11 is 12? I believe so. Let me, uh... Let me do a quick count. Shang Tsung, Terminator, Fujin, Sindel, Melina, Shiva, Nightwolf, Spawn, Joker, huh, because MK11's been out for a year, right? Roughly. Roughly, yeah. Because there were six in the first pack. Mm Mm-hmm. And then there was Fujin, Shiva, Rain, Melina, huh. You know what, fuck it, you know what, let's, let's see them grab Ash Williams, I want to see them at least try it. I want to see them at least try it. I want to see what it's going to be, because I know it's going to be fun. Yeah. And do it as a final, like, this is the last character we're going to be making for the game. He is the last, like, big character that we're going to be doing, because everybody has requested him, so why not do it? Yeah, why not? I say commercial break? (laughs) Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to be leading on to the next topic. You're getting a twofer. Usually we just talk about one thing and see what happens, but we realize that everybody else on the internet's relatively covering the story and there's not much that we can add to the discussion fully. So we kind of want to do a little bit of some light shining on a project that Nikos and I found on Indiegogo. Uh, yeah. James? James. Hey, James. You, Yeah, James of the future. Not James that's probably listening to this right now and is asking questions, why the fuck is he calling my name? Can you do me, like, a favor? Yeah, thumbs up. Thanks. Could you grab the Indiegogo trailer for this fighting game that's coming out, or is being worked on, that Nikos and I have found that's really cool? Zero Kills is a classic 2D pixel fighter in the vein of the many iconic fighters we all love from our youth. However, we modernize the style for a whole new generation while capturing the fast and flashy visuals that captivated a generation of gamers. But this isn't just a game. The world of serial killers is trite in corruption and greed. And it all began when Dr. K returned. The nefarious Dr. Kel L. Oggs, a crazed physician, health fanatic, and creator of the mysterious elixir of rejuvenation, otherwise known as the secret recipe. He was once a highly esteemed pillar of the nutritional sciences community when it was discovered that he'd been performing illegal experiments in the name of the U.S. government. He fled into hiding within the deep jungles of his private island, Waki Waki. Decades later, he revealed he was still alive, donning a villainous mask in the name Dr. K. With the attention of the entire world focused on what he planned to do next, he extends an invitation to his former test subjects, who he so arrogantly refers to as his children. It's amazing, it's wild, it's weird, but overall, it's part of a complete breakfast. 
We'll see you folks in a little bit. If you like the content that you saw today, make sure you check out For The Win Productions and subscribe to the affiliates of this conglomerate. A Simple Man Studios, Insanity Works Studios, Genelese Beauty Slam, J. Hebert Studios, Wrestling Fortune 44 Incorporated, Owen the Talkinator Studios, and of course, Weymouth Youth Wrestling. All in the J. Hebert Side 95 modules. Subscribe today. A table from hell with the Psycho Asylum. <laughs> An Iron Man match of factorial proportions, man. In this fight, I will melt you down to slag. Versus machine. I calculate a 0.85% chance that you will win in your current condition. All metal I may have. Calling Horizon. When you throw me into the wolves, I will return leading the pack. Vera the Garden. I'll do anything to be the warrior on top. For the Athena title, best friends turn bitter rivals. Johnny Star. Don't get in the way to start or you'll get burned. James the Ark. Angel. I'm the real star of this brand. For the international title. The outsider. Mark Young. The executioner. Michael X. For the WIW World Heavyweight title. Two out of three fall. Inside. In a hell. In, in a, a cell. cell. WIW Immortal. Now available on YouTube. And we're hey, back. Did you like? So, uh, did you like that trailer? I we thought really it was great. Did. I think it's really cool. I can't wait to actually get into this. So, Serial Killers. <laughs> and then you go to the project that has been funded by uh, the boys. Yes, you, uh, you heard me. James, throw it up on screen. Uh, please blur up some sensitive information that's in there. Trust me. There's always sensitive information in, in one of these. So, yeah, Serial Killers. An interesting brand new Indiegogo concept created for our viewing pleasure. We're talking about a fucking serial goddamn fighting game. Now, How there is are it many that no things... one has thought of it years ago? I don't know, dude. It's really cool, though. Like, it's really interesting to see something different. Like, something that, honestly, I would have never thought about. But Honestly, yeah. Cool. So, why don't we get into it? Sure. Nikos, could you please pull up on your end the Indiegogo project, and I will as well from my end. Okay. And to let it be said, I dropped $25 down on this project because I wanted to see... I want to see this come out, personally. I want to see what's going to happen. I was originally going to do the 75 tier, but, you know, I didn't want to spend a fuck ton of money. <laughs> So basically, it's the campaign backing uh, for this game. Uh, mainly, it's just a demo build a, for the 2D fighting game. And Mike, our boy here, has contributed enough money for, for it to, you know, to, to be backed enough. Well, I contributed a bit. I, I put 25 bucks down because I want to see this come out because I'm at the point where it's like, I've never truly been able to fund an Indiegogo project. And this mm -hmm. is what I'm really interested in. Yep. So right now they're at their $10,448 threshold. They want to reach uh, their $50,000 goal. They have 199 backers and they have 30 days left. Go help them fund this. <laughs> it's totally worth doing. It's Serial impervious. Is, yes. Uh, Serial Killers is a classic 2D fighting game featuring thinly veiled characters from all of your favorite cereal, breakfast cereals. Fast paced and colorful, it's easy to pick up, but with enough technical depth to satisfy even the most hardcore fans of the genre. Our current aim is to secure enough funding to make a full playable demo version of the game. A chance for players to experience for themselves how the final product will feel and play. We plan to include two characters, a full moveset, artwork, and backstory. Damn, you, uh... Serial Killers 2D fighting game demo build. At long last, the age-old question will be answered. If they fought, who would win? So, Serial Killers this... is a classic... 
2D fighting game featuring thinly veiled characters from all your favorite breakfast cereals. Fast paced and colorful. It's easy to pick up with, but enough tactical depth to satisfy even the most hardcore fans of the genre. Our current aim is to secure enough funding to make a fully playable demo version of the game. A chance for players to experience for themselves how the final product will feel and play. We plan to include two characters from with full moveset, artwork, and backstory. Obsessed with discovering the secret to eternal life, the nefarious Dr. K has spent decades tinkering with human and animal DNA in his secret laboratory. Now the results of his previous experiments are threatened to come back to bite him in the frighteningly literal way. Now from his private island of Wacky Wacky, he invites a selection of supernatural warriors and his own failed experiments to compete in a fighting tournament for a prize that none of them can refuse. So it shows a uh, select list of the characters. So for the first one, it's Tony the Tiger or Terror T, where his catchphrase is, you might want to buckle in. Things are about to get gruesome. Terror T was a GI during the last days of the Vietnam War. Morally wounded, he was placed in the care of the notorious Dr. K. Who the fuck do you think Dr. K is going to be as a serial mascot, by the way? In your opinion. Dr. K. Why? I don't know why, but I'm thinking it's Dr. Kellogg's. Because of the K. I probably, because most of these mascots are Kellogg's brand. Uh, yeah. And revived using the DNA of a Siberian tiger. And the doctor's secret recipe gains the animal like characteristics of a tiger in the process. So, first off, let's say it this fucking character design looks great. It's amazing. Like, oh my I god. I love the intricacy of the toll design. The sprite work looks great. Yeah. He's got... He, he's a pro wrestler build. He's gonna be a rushdown style character from, from Look Alone. True. Don't let his bulky structure fool you. He is a precision heavy hitter who can fire off a flurry of fists and claw-based attacks to shred his enemies into pieces. And just like a tiger, he knows how to draw in his prey for the kill. So, Nikos, the gameplay. Terra T will be a rushdown playstyle character. I knew it! To make sure to... So make sure to utilize his tools to get in on your opponent and overwhelm them with pressure. Once you're in, you'll have to commit, and so make sure you have a plan of attack. Because this oh man will hit hard. I, I really hope he's a grappler, too. I really hope they add some grapple chaining in there. He looks like a grappler. I can't, by the way, I, I'm really interested in the fact that this game's going to be four buttons, a special move, and three base attacks. Light, yeah. medium, and heavy. So it's going to play like Injustice. Which I'm stoked about because I love the Injustice gameplay. Mm -hmm. Would you like to read the next character, good sir? Sure. The second character that they'll release is Mr. Lucky. McLucky. The day you cross McLucky is the day your luck runs out. They literally created Luco Lucky. And he's even furrier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So good, sir. You, you got this one. When the fairy folk left Ireland, they refused to take the murderer's McLucky with them, cursing him instead to wander the realm of man forever. Now the only way he can gain enough power to open a doorway to the other world is by defeating powerful rivals and imprisoning their souls within the many grisly charms he carries about his person. And from the look of this dude, what do you think? They're always after me, Lucky Chimes. They won't be so lucky when they come up against him. They're always after his McLucky Chimes. His McLucky Chimes. Fuck right off. Yeah. McLucky <laughs> likes to keep his distance. Using the magical abilities of his charms, he focuses on projectile-based assaults to throw his enemies off guard before closing in for the finishing blow. 
the gameplay uh, for McLucky, he will be a zoning style character, easily keeping his opponent out and putting on the pressure when time is needed. Making sure to utilize, make sure to utilize his long range normals appropriately. But be careful that randomly throwing out attacks will result in big pu- uh, punishes. So in, in simple terminology, don't play him like a Shoto character. You need to make sure that every fireball that you throw is going to hit. Because as soon as you throw it, you're fucked. Mm-hmm. So, will there be more characters in the future? The correct answer is yes. <laughs> Oh, While definitely. the demo will focus primarily on Tony T and McLucky, should we meet our stretch goal, we will be able to implement even more characters, getting us closer to a full build of the game. And based from the characters that we're looking at, there is a lot of good, interesting, and amazing detailed characters. You want to go over the first ones? Well, obviously... So- we got Terra T. Uh, and by the way, I'm going from left to right on from yep. the top. Yep. So again, we got Terra T. The next one, Commandant, Commandant Crush. Crush. I really hope they give him a fucking pirate voice fully, because I've always had the problem with Captain Crunch that he doesn't have a pirate voice. The name Yeah, that, that's what Crush. bothered me about him. The name be Commandant Crush. Ye be trying to get across me salty flats. That ain't be happening here, you sweet water. True, and I hope they don't give him a Russian voice because his name is Commandant. So I'm like, nah, just make him a pirate. Just make him a pirate. He's a pirate. He's got yeah, a exactly. skin for a leg, dude. Yeah. And next uh, one, you got Ted yeah. Ryoki Sugar. I love. This fucking goofy design. I love it. I love it. Mm-hmm. But my favorite choice is after him, which is Brute Lee. Brutally. Brutally was fucking awesome because he's a Bruce Lee reference and he's yeah. based off the uh, cereal fruit brute. Mm-hmm. And the one bottom of him is App Jacks. Like Apple combination Jacks? of Apple Jacks and a he looks Gundam. cool. He looks like a fucking Gundam. He looks really sick. He does. I can't wait to play as him. He looks really fucking cool. Yeah. The one next to him is named V. And for those the of you who don't know who he is, he the is V. King Vitamin. Even though in this, he's a wizard. Yeah. So I think he's the wizard Vitamin. True. La Coco. Oh, I know you're going to love this character just from his design. <laughs> Look, Coco's fucking cool, dude. It's I the love Coco the Puffs. That he's Coco in a straight Puffs. jacket. In a straight jacket. Hot Von Cool. <laughs> That's amazing, honestly. I fucking love that Count Chocula is a fighting game character. Mm-hmm. Two can slam. Can oh he please my. have a fit? Can one of his level ones be called the Tucana Slammer? I'm just yeah. saying. I also like the fact that he's got his fucking kids with them. Oh, yeah, true. We gotta Bottom talk about of McLucky. Is, of course, McLucky, yep. Who's just. Oh, God, I love that whole. I love the jacket hoodie. I love the fucking. The sleeveless hoodie. I know. It looks great. Next time you got Frankenslime. Who is uh, Frankenberry. Mm-hmm. Next time you got Lickum. He looks really is... fucking cool. Yeah. Like, I like the punk rock aesthetic and the, uh, the mohawk. I think mm-hmm. his tongue has a fucking spike. Like, uh, it's a mace. I so see I it, know yeah. How... At the I bottom. don't know how, they're gonna, how that's going to work for his gameplay, but mm-hmm. it seems like it's going to be really cool if they do it right. Oh, true. But Fucking not as impressive Wolver as Wolver B. Wolver B. <laughs> oh my god. You, you know, know what they say, though? Tricks are for kids. This trick does not look like he's for kids. 
whatsoever. ever. This, this dude honestly looks like he'll snap your neck. Speaking no, no. of... Snap your neck, crush your back, pop, oh cap. Snap, crackle, and motherfucking pop. They are goddamn ninjas. They're Naruto-esque ninjas with their open-toed shoes. These are going to be the best characters in the game, honestly. I mean, they're I'm be for the rest of, of the characters, they're good. These guys will be amazing. Gods. These they characters need gods. to be really fucking good, because it's three characters on the screen at once if they do it right. True. Which means that they are constantly doing bullshit combos, which is going to be fun. Mm-hmm. Here comes Next. Chronic. <laughs> 2001. For those, of you who, for those of you who don't know who Chronic is, if any of you re remember eating honeycomb cereal, he was the crackhead hedgehog. Honey nut. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honey nut! Oh, and you're not going to be stopping the Chronic! <laughs> Smoking a doobie! <laughs> What's going on? Getting fucked up. Uh, uh. <laughs> he looks, he's on. He looks like he's on drugs. Honestly. Boo boo. Boo boo. Boo boo. Boo boo. Boo boo. Boo boo. Rocking everywhere. Boo boo. Boo boo. Boo boo. Rocking everywhere. Oh, I can't wait to see this character fully done. Boo Berry, ladies and gentlemen, and he looks really fucking cool. But not as cool as Sunny Two Shanks. What a weird fucking character choice. Just the son from the Raisin Bran boxes, but he's must he has he has muscles. Ooh, oh, muscles. So strong, eh? yes. And he has knives. Ooh. Bump it up, eh? <laughs> uh for the uh creators of serial killers, please let us know if you need voice actors. We have no problem throwing our uh our linguistic hats in the ring for some of these characters. Oh, yeah. We would be definitely be a part of it. So, the main menu screen, which is not the final design that needs to be said, Serial Killers will have a two-button system, which is light, medium, and heavy attacks, along with the special button. So it is the obvious... The uh, very, very obvious injustice system. Mm -hmm. For the demo, this will be a 1v1 style fighting game. Yep. That will play similar to the Versus series. If you don't know what the Versus series is, that means it's going to play like Marvel versus Capcom, which I hope. Yeah. Which means chain combos, ground to air. I hope we get bounces, wall bounces, ground bounces. We have fucking chaining. We have hyper chaining. We have DHCs. Each so character hard. will have a variety of special moves, supers for all kinds of crazy combos. The demo will primarily focus on, will only focus on localized play. However, online play is planned for a potential full game release. Yep. Our demo will also feature two player local versus experience, a brief tutorial story mode. Uh, unique to both Terry and McLucky, as well as stretch goal characters, if those goals are met. A special bonus stage uh, versus the endurance punching box training oats. That's hilarious. Yeah. So, good sir, you ready to tackle the gameplay mechanics? Sure. The skill technique button... Which is oh no no you need to you need to read that is if you're uh, reading a fight like you're the fighting game god reading off the actual uh, underlined bits that are in bold. The skill technique button. Skill button is a mechanic that will add something unique to a character. These skills can give a character a boost in damage, a new attack, or an extra move to help them maneuver around in a match. Throws. Each character will have a forward and back throw. This is something most of you should be familiar with. Special, special moves. moves! Each character will have a variety of special attacks. Integral and near their moveset. Enhanced versions of special moves will cost half a meter. 
Super Moves. Each character will have a level 1 supers and level 3 super. You want to read this last one? Oh, maliciously. Break Three, fast. Two. Oh, I thought we were going to do a countdown. It's break fast. Yeah. <laughs> This is a mechanic that is used in tough situations. If you are feeling the pressure and want your opponent to get off you, spend one bar of meter to push them off. If they really annoy you, you spend two bars of meter to push them off and follow up with a full combo. So it's kind of like the push blocking that's in classic Capcom games slash... Uh, Guard breaking, or, uh, yeah, guard blocking in Mortal Kombat. Yep. However, I do like the fact that two bars will allow you to follow up a full combo, which is fucking super worth it. True. The names, however, are not finalized. So, let's talk about the boys. Yep. Who are they? Serial Kellis is developed by a team of industry professionals whose long-standing passion for fighting games and breakfast foods have leaned them to collaborate on making the game of their dreams. So we're talking about Mikhail Mythica. Sorry, Mythalica. I want to get that right. Yeah. Sebastian, who is the project lead. He is the primary creator and director. Uh, I like that they put down all of their bullshit. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I'm gonna be honest. So, do you want to go for it, good sir? So they have combo style, <laughs> combo defensive style. long range, offensive close range, <laughs> special moves. Fourth, my favorite character. Good choice, by the way, for the favorite character, Magneto from CBS. Fucking, he's a god. Mm-hmm. Breakfast of choice: eggs, oats, and toast, or a pr- or a good protein shake. Oh boy. <laughs> so for his bio. Mikhail Sebastian is an illustrator, animator, and a Glyph Award-winning published author with an undergraduate in illustration from the Savannah College of Art and Design. He's who's done work for the Los Angeles Clippers, Carl Jones, Universal Pictures, Noir Caesar, and the United States Census Department, just to name a few. While he's contributed to the visions of many great minds, it is his own ideas that he has committed his time, effort, and resources towards the most. Michel Monet, programmer, role, programmer, and staff. Fighting style. I have Lang Schwartz. Lang Schwartz. Long Schwartz. Long sword. Is his fighting style long dick? He's got long dick style. It's your Special boy LB, long dick. By the way, I like his character choice. Smoke from MK9. Fucking great character. Breakfast food bagel. Michelle is a free is a freelance game developer, credited for over 10 100 projects to date. He has worked for Ubisoft, Riot, Capcom, Hasbro, Sony, and many more. And various Captivity Rangers is producer, designer, and programmer. Next up, we got Andrew Hein Ratanakomkan. I am sorry if I butchered your last name. It's He's okay, a lead. They're not expecting us to try too hard. Yeah. <laughs> He's a lead animator and for role, lead animator and gameplay designer. Combat style, be boying. I'm pretty sure that's boxing, but eh, it's alright. What's going to happen? Special move. Fire Footwork, Favorite Fighter, another good one, Ryu from Street Fighter. Wow, they're really choosing really great fighters. I'm giving props to that. Breakfast of Choice, he doesn't eat breakfast. Strange. For his bio, Andrew is a freelance artist who has worked with heavily in pixel art animations under a variety of projects and games. His love of fighting games has ushered his passion straight into the creative force that drives our visceral animation. Corey Rivas, background artist. Role, background artist, and UI design. Fighting style, Spike Fiend. Special move, suck and cuck. <laughs> Favorite fighter, King K. Roll in Super Smash Bros. Oh, Thickus Maximus. Food, breakfast food of choice, pancakes and bacon. Corey is a freelance in, uh... <laughs> whoopsie. 
Corey is a freelance illustrator, recent graduate from SCOD Industry uh, Indie Games, and animated f- and animations fuel his impression and character design and background art to create. Oh God, I have a that fucking sprite. <laughs> the bubbles in my stomach are starting to come up. So every oh no! I, say words, I want to <laughs> belch, and I don't want to do that because it's fucking grody. Yeah. Living in color and design. Sorry, I had to throw that out there because I want my people thinking I'm fucking illiterate. Trust me, I'm not illiterate. I'm just dumb. <laughs> and lastly, we got Lee Williams, writer, combat style, origami, special move, feign injury, favorite fighter, Blanca from Street Fighter 2. Take Breakfast your fucking choice. trash and get out of here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Breakfast of choice, bacon and eggs. Lee is a writer and narrative designer with many years of experience, having previously worked on titles published by Ubisoft, Developer Digital, and Choice of Games, among others. Where will my money go? (laughs) Listen, I put 25 into this project because I want to see this done, because I want to see developers that aren't high-related fucking developers finally get some light shined upon them and this is this is what this whole podcast should be about definitely and shining is is giving the shine to those that need it uh walking into this project we knew we had one and only one goal to make the game we've seen countless campaigns flutter from biting off more than they can chew our goal is simple to create a fully functioning demo and you know what good choice boys of course. Because that's all they're trying to make, is, is to make a demo. And you know what? I gotta give them credit. If it's good enough, I will absolutely be the first one to say, we are playing this live in yeah, front indeed. of the world. So that way it can be out there. Yep. To create a fully functioning demo that we can shop to potential publishers for a full game in the future. Should we receive the funds to produce a full build ourselves, then that's exactly what we will do. The The game is the goal. Nikos? TLDR, if you help us fund this project, we will make this game. Simple as that. For the rewards in terms of physical items, we know you want them, And as awesome as many of the physical items we have planned are, the current global situation would only further complicate the process of making this game. That is understandable. Which is our main priority. We've instead created a batch of digital rewards completely exclusive to the backers of this campaign that we will fill. Peak your interest all the same. That is reasonably um, great. Honestly, just... Digital rewards, and that is perfect. Because I know physical items will be more difficult to get through. I mean, hell, my diploma got in like three months ago, but, you know, beggars can't be choosers. Hey, I, as you know, with my 25 bucks that I threw in, and you know what, that's something I do want to go over really quick is the rewards. So, for a buck, you get a thank you. Obviously, you're going to get thrown to the credits because you help them back their shit. Mm -hmm. For five bucks... For five dollars, what you get is an exclusive phone case, which will have uh, the two characters that are going to be in the demo on the front, which is yep. pretty cool. You're going to be getting a, uh, a brand new phone case for either iPhone or Android. Mm-hmm. The estimated case dates attached. Yep, sorry. Can you, yep. Can you, uh, continue, good sir. The estimated dates attached to the perks only apply to the digital deliverables: OST, digital art book. Digital comic book, wallpapers, etc. Dates for build releases will be announced at a later date. For twelve dollars, you have the thank you, a f- the phone case, and the taste tester early access. So, to in full thing, yes, it's twelve dollars for a demo of a game, but it's twelve dollars for a demo of a game. That's worth it. It's early access to get into this, where everybody else would have to wait months and months till the demo is actually fully released. Because that shit takes time, and I, I had no problem dropping a little bit of cash down on this. True. 
Then there's the MP3 Player 1. It's everything from the previous two. But you get the MP3 soundtrack, which is pretty fucking, from what I can tell, is going to be really good. The <laughs> Breakfast Brawler Pack. Which gives you the, the thank you, the phone case, the taste tester, early access. Um, the, uh, the digital comic is added, and you get the, uh, the actual album. Yep. For, sorry, every time that I hit this, I have to go back and try to get back into the actual thing. So the amount that I spent, which was 25 time to be exclusive. Get, I get the thank you, I get the phone case, I get the phone wallpaper, I get the taste tester, I get the, uh, the album, the digital comic, and a full game reserved. $25 for a full game. I cannot complain about that. That's awesome. That I, I wish they would also give you like a box of cereal just randomly. They should totally do that. They but should it's just their, make it's their artistic design of the characters on the cereal. Like, say, if you're just getting Kellogg's or Frosted Flakes, instead of just getting the usual looking Frosted Flakes, it's Terror T's design on the box. <laughs> That'd be pretty sick. That would. For seventy five bucks, which I was originally so for the going stretch to do. goals. Yep. 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 So for seventy five, you get the thank you, the phone wallpaper, the taste test, early access, the MP three album, the art book, the comic, full reservation of the game, and an NPC in the game designed off of you. You get to be in this fucking game. Yeah. You get to be a character. Don't ask questions. You're gonna get put into it. For $500, which I know is a lot, that's a lot, but hear me out if you're a fighting game, you, this is specifically made, this one right here, and the $75 tier are made for fighting game fans that want to be placed into this project and be, you know, given their just due. You get to make a costume and a stage, or a stage for the game, for 500 now, I know it's a lot. It's a lot. That's asking a lot. But in theory, if the game makes money, I think they're going to be giving you a portion to some extent. But you're going to be making a co an alternate costume for a character or you're going to be going for a, um, a stage design. I know that they haven't had anybody do that yet. However, they did get the all-in... They have three backers for the all-in amount of $1,000. Oh. Which gives them... Everything from the $500 tier, including an in-game VO and exclusive producing credit. Mm -hmm. Which means... <laughs> team up with our character artist and stage artist to create your own costume for a character of your choice between Terra T and Mick Lucky, along with creating your own stage. We received in-game shoutouts from your favorite character, as well as an exclusive producer credit. Nice. I honestly say, if you're going to go for anything, go for that $25 thing, or just give them a buck here and there. Of course. Um, right now, they've reached 10498 They're trying to hit their $50,000 goal. Mm -hmm. They already have 201 backers. So, Nikos, continue what you were going to be reading. So, for the stretch goals... For 75000 the stretch goal would be a new character joins the fight. If this goal is met, we'll add a new character, an accomplishing stage, OST, and unique story mode. For a hundred k stretch goal, same thing. New character joins the fight. If this goal is met, we'll add a new character, accompanying stage, OST, and unique story. But for the 150000 stretch goal, Which two is what new I want characters. to see them hit. I want to see as many characters thrown into the demo that aren't just to get them to that 150,000 goal. They deserve it. These are hard-working boys. They have done way more in an Indiegogo than I have seen. Indeed. So two brand new fucking characters, and we know... We can see the silhouettes, and we know who they are for all four of these characters. Indeed. Fuck it. They should do a, they should do a 2,000 tier for two more characters. Mm-hmm. Fuck it. <laughs> so, if it's that good, they may do it. Yeah, they should. I think that they really should. 
Yep. Uh, good, sir. Would you like to read the risks and challenges, and then we'll uh, we'll get to the end of the podcast? Sure thing. So some risks involved have been mentioned by the community prior to the launch of this campaign. While cease and desist letters are certainly possible, we are confident that our project meets a criteria for protection under Section 107 of the U.S. Copyrights Law and thus is protected under satirical fair use. However, we know that this won't prevent potential threats from being made. We've reached out to a trademark lawyer to assist us with any and all legal processes that could arise in the future. We understand the real risk of C and D threats, so if a situation arises to where changes to our characters will need to be made, that also means we'd have to change their animations from the ground up. We are prepared to tackle any situations should they arise. And yeah, it's important to be very careful when using these characters, because, you know, there are some brand deals, there's some cease and desist copyright laws that they have. I but don't know, wouldn't these be protected under the parody law? Yeah, because it's not entirely, like, the characters you'd see on the series. Like, they're not what they are portrayed as. It's completely satirical. This is just, like, an imagination or or an idea of how some people would perceive these characters to be in a fighting game. So it's not actually them. It's just more of a parody. Just as long as, you know, it, it sticks to what the concept of this whole thing really is. Agreed. I, I think, though, that if any major... I, I don't even know how a serial company can be, like, losing their shit over this, personally. Yeah. It's only a game. Why you have to be men? The main risk involved in making serial killers would be the potential of conflicting schedules due to the adverse effects of the current global pandemic, of course. Our team is small and dedicated, however, we are... All full-time workers in our designated careers. While that will not inhibit the overall production of the game, it could occasionally affect our working schedules. More successful the campaign, however, the more time our team will be able to dedicate to the game. In most of our cases, even making it our full-time job, which would help reduce scheduling conflicts. There's always the risk of something unexpected and outside of our control slowing the development of the game, but such possibilities become remote once Metallica Incorporated has funding to work with. And that's that. Boys and girls, get them to their goal. They deserve... I think that if, if they have... This is a good idea. I think that this is going to be a fun idea of a game. Oh, and true. I really want to see more happen in, in the standings of care. And love, and it's obvious that they have a passion for fighting games. It's absolutely obvious. Of course. And I think if you respect that passion, I wouldn't say throw in the fi- don't don't throw in that five hundred dollars stretch goal at the start. Yeah. But if start you small. really want to see it done, do it. Absolutely, do it. And who knows? Look at it if from this their becomes perspective. successful. Yeah, if it, I think, I really hope it does. So we might see a crossover with other games, like maybe in Street Fighter, maybe Tekken, maybe Mortal Kombat Ultimate. Who knows? <laughs> Terror T and MK. <laughs> oh, He's God, here, boys. Be... Terror T and MK. <laughs> a giant tiger man to fight Kintaro. One v one against the Great One. Here it comes, oh, Kintaro! <laughs> oh god, that would be amazing. <laughs> Just to fucking completely throw that in there, why not? True. But yeah, I say absolutely help out the guys. Let them let them do what they have to do. They obviously are very passionate about this. And oh, we definitely. we give them our full, our full, like, how do you do, I guess you could call it. That we want to see them make something that they are passionate about because I know that they would want us to make something that we are passionate about. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And that being said, thank you for joining Open Mic Night. And uh, we really hope that you folks uh, have enjoyed uh, your time here tonight. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the boys of the Indie Force 
and you know, watch a couple of the other shows that are going on. Uh, FTW Productions has a couple things in the works right now. Uh, we just did a uh, wrestling review, a retro wrestling review, me, Nikos, and James on Halloween Havoc uh, 1991 and uh, yep. how terrible that shit was. Yeah. We will so, cover yeah. more pay-per-views, but in due time. We do have an Indie Force coming up. I'm not sure where this is going to be placed on the grand scale of things, because that's uh, that's our editor, James. That's on his behalf of which to do. Mm-hmm. But in that being said, thank you for joining Open Mic Night. We really hope that you folks enjoyed it. Uh, please, as I said before, leave a like, comment, and sub. And we'll see you on the next episode. Take care, everyone. Good night. Good night.